Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I'm going to talk about something that's been rattling around in the back of my mind for a little while now, but I kind of had to put it aside because of the whole Brie Larson, Captain Marvel fiasco that's going on. But I am going to talk a little bit about Marvel movies in this as well. And I'm going to look at what Disney and Marvel actually think their product is. Because I think this is extremely important. When you look at what Disney actually sells and how they sell it, something very interesting comes up. And that is the point that all of these things that Disney puts out, except for the movies, but I'll get back to that. Everything that Disney puts out, it is selling something that is not the actual thing that you have in your hands. Okay, what do I mean by this? Well, let's look at Captain Marvel itself. Captain Marvel, I did a video on this about a month or two ago about all of the merchandise that was coming out with Captain Marvel. And this was a massive amount of stuff. It was plushies and bobbleheads and bicycles and jewelry and watches and Halloween costumes and stationery and backpacks and you name it, it had Captain Marvel's face on it and they were trying to sell it. But the point is that when you actually buy one of these things, the product that Disney is selling you is not the thing that you have in your hands. The product that they want to sell you is the character itself. And that's what Disney wants to do. It wants to sell you the character. Because when somebody picks up a piece of jewelry with Captain Marvel's symbol on it or Captain Marvel's face on it, and believe me, I don't know why someone would want to do that, but there are people out there that do that. When they pick this up, they don't say to themselves, I want a new piece of jewelry, I'm going to buy this one. No, they say to themselves, hey look, this has the Captain Marvel symbol on it, therefore I want to buy it. I should use a better example than Captain Marvel, because no one's probably going to buy that stuff. But that's what goes on, and that's what Disney wants to do. Because this is how Disney makes money hand over fist. This is what they've been doing for some time now. They don't want to produce an actual product that is something that people want. No, they want to produce some kind of garbage product that they can pay pennies for, like, like t-shirts, right? They can get t-shirts made in some third world country for pennies, get their slave labor going, and just have them being pumped out, and all they need to do is to take the face of some MCU hero and slap it on that t-shirt, and they can take that thing that they produced with pennies and sell it for $20 a pop. That's what Disney wants to do. That's how Disney makes money, and that is the end product of Disney. When they sell you these things, like a t-shirt, like a toy, like anything else that I mentioned, it is the character that they are selling you. Now, I want to look at how this affects the comics, but first, let's take a step back and look at how Disney has done this historically. I do believe that Marvel had this pattern before they were gobbled up by Disney, but Disney had the same pattern, and when they gobbled up Marvel, they just took that pattern and put it into overdrive with Marvel. So the thing is that with Disney, what they traditionally did was they took something like a fairy tale that was in the back of people's minds that people probably heard of before but really didn't know very much about. And then they produced a movie about it. And if you were talking to people before, say, Beauty and the Beast came out, and you asked them, do you know what Beauty and the Beast is? They would have some inkling that it was a fairy tale, but they probably couldn't tell you anything about it. But after the movie came out, if you asked anybody, and you still ask anybody today, what is Beauty and the Beast, they will give you the rundown for the movie that was produced by Disney. And that is specifically what Disney wants. You see, the only exception to this character as a product is the movies, because the movies make massive amounts of money. So the movie itself is the product. But there is a secondary product that they generate with the movies. And that is to connect the audience of the general public with the idea of these characters. And so they cement in the minds of the general public who these characters are with their massive multi-million dollar movies. And when that connection is made, then they can start slapping the faces of these characters onto anything and everything that they can produce for pennies and sell it for $20 a pop. 
and then they can start charging fifty a hundred dollars a person to get into their theme parks that are centered around comic book characters then they can sell thousand dollar a person tickets to cruise line cruises that have marvel characters on them because they have marvel cruises now where you have all of the marvel cast just wandering around the cruise line and you have things like doctor strange doing magic shows at night they have all of this stuff because the point is that the movies have connected the audience the general public with that character and now the general public knows who that character is and therefore they can sell the product of that character over and over and over again in every way that they can think of in every way that they can make massive amounts of money by putting pennies into what they are actually making and getting hundred dollar bills at the other end this is disney's business model and this was Marvel's business model right before Disney took them over. I think it was Marvel's business model right after the MCU really took off. And that is what is actually going on. Now, the point is that what happens when you look at comic books? When you apply this to comics, what happens? Well, you'll see that this does not work out well for comics at all. Because let's take that model, that Disney fairy tale model, and apply it to Marvel. The same thing happened. All right, you have these characters, you have Marvel Comics and all of their characters. And the point is that, again, they're like modern day fairy tales. A lot of people call them modern day myths and legends, but they're not because myths and legends are something completely different. They're modern day fairy tales. And the point is that if you asked anybody before the MCU ever existed, do you know any of these characters? Do you know Spider-Man? Do you know Captain America? Do you know any of these characters at all? They might have some inkling in the back of their mind. Because comic books have been around for so long, and these characters have been around for so long, because people at that point, before the MCU, had an inkling that they existed, but not much else. And the point was to take that inkling and to use it to create a movie that was going to connect the audience of the general public with those characters. And again, so that once they did that, then those characters became the product. They're going to slap their faces on everything, and that's the product. The same thing happened. It's the exact same thing as Disney princesses. Marvel is simply the boy equivalent of Disney princesses. So the thing is that when you apply this to comics, this is why you get garbage coming out of Marvel Comics right now. Because you have Marvel Comics and you have people saying, why, why Marvel are you producing this garbage? We want a good product. And if you look at things like Comicsgate, it is a customer movement demanding a good product. But the customer can demand a good product all at once. If the product that they want is not the actual product that Disney and Marvel are going to sell when they produce a comic book, then they're never going to make any headway at all. Because again, the point of making a comic book for Marvel is not to sell you the product of a comic book. It is to sell you the product of the character. And when you look at it in that fashion, when you look at that model, then you understand what is actually going on with Marvel Comics. Because when the product is the character itself, then you don't have to care about little things like continuity in your universe. You don't have to care about little things like having a consistent personality with your characters. You don't have to care about little things like paying homage to the legacy of this character. And you certainly don't have to care about a good story or good art or good paper and good ink or any of those kinds of things. It doesn't matter. They're producing a five cent t-shirt and slapping the picture of the character on it so that they can sell the character. Not so that they can sell you a comic book. And you have people like Richard over at Diversity in Comics or Comics Matter saying that he has insiders at Marvel and they keep telling him that Marvel, Marvel Comics that is, is run like a rudderless ship. No one's in control and that's why they pump out garbage. But I would say they have that a little backwards. No, no one is in control because the point is that they're supposed to pump out garbage so they don't need anyone in control. There is no need for them to produce anything of substance. There is no need for them to produce anything of merit. Quite the contrary. 
Things with substance and things of merit actually take work, and work you have to pay for. And if you have to pay for it, then Disney's bottom line starts to shrink. And therefore, they don't want anything of merit. They don't want anything that has substance. They, again, just want to produce the equivalent of a five cent slave labor t-shirt and slap the image of the character on it and therefore sell the product of the character. So, that having been said, there may be something that I am completely oblivious to that would change Marvel Comics for the better, but if I look at it rationally right now, with all the things that I understand about Marvel Comics, I cannot see any reason why Marvel Comics would actually start producing good comics again. Any reason whatsoever. You know, I still hold out that hope, and you'll probably hear that hope in some of my videos. But that's just a hope. If I'm looking at plain old facts on a page, there is no hope. And it doesn't matter what would happen, even if the comic book industry were to collapse tomorrow. I still don't think Marvel would start producing anything of substance and merit because Disney does not want to produce anything of substance and merit because that costs money and all they want to do is sell the product of the character. And I firmly believe that this was the path that Marvel set out on as soon as it started to look at taking its characters and its stories into different mediums. Because you have comics, and they have these beautiful stories, these stories that are equal to any great stories in any other medium, but they're stuck in this small little medium that no one pays attention to, which is comic books. And they said to themselves, well look, how do we maximize our profit with these great stories? Well, the obvious answer was to make them into movies. Because, of course, with the panels, with your art, you already have the whole storyboard set up. So it's easy enough to take the great stories and the storyboard and turn it into a movie. But as soon as you start doing that, you start ignoring the comics as a medium itself, and your movies become your massive money makers for these stories. And then the whole Disney mindset kicks in because, of course, again, you have connected the minds of the public with these characters and therefore you don't need to tell good stories in this small medium anymore. You simply need to sell the product of the character to as many people as possible with merchandise of various kinds. And so what does the future of comic books look like? Well, I would say that no one in comic books right now, whether it be Marvel or DC or any of the small companies, no one is concentrating on the medium of comic books itself and making comics great. Because you even have Valiant and Dark Horse and the rest of the small companies. All they're doing, and they have admitted this, they're just putting out stories in the hopes that one day these stories will become movies. And since this is what they're doing, if they succeed, they will simply be caught up in this Disney loop and they will never have good comics anymore. And even if they try it and fail, they're simply not producing good comics for good comics anymore. Because they're not putting their best effort forward for the comics. They're saving it. They're reserving it for if and when this becomes a movie. You know, they're not leaving it all on the field. It reminds me of that scene from Gattaca, where you had the older brother having a swimming competition with his younger brother who was genetically modified, and the younger brother lost, and the younger brother couldn't figure out why he lost. And he asked his older brother, said, why, how did I lose when you're inferior to me? And the younger brother said, it's because I didn't leave anything for the swim back. I put it all out there. And that's the whole point of why comics became great to begin with, is because you have these people, they had nowhere to go. And since they had nowhere to go, they put everything they had into the product that they were making, which was an actual comic book. But I suppose this does have a bit of a silver lining if you really love the MCU. Because even though I am firmly of the opinion, but it's just that, it's just my opinion, that the MCU is trying to go woke. And that even if Captain Marvel fails, they're still going to try to do that. They're just going to slow down a little bit. But at the same time, if I look at the way that Disney operates, they are very careful with their giant money makers, which is the movies. Because again, of course, not only do they make massive amounts of money, but they take that character and connect it to the minds of the general public. And they need that connection to always be there in order for them to produce the garbage material that they slap the character's face on and sell for massive amounts of profit. So, when you look at what Marvel is actually doing in the MCU, they are still trying 
to ensure that those Marvel movies will continue to do that for a long time to come. And in order to do that, they're really going to have to look at what they're doing and say, we need to produce something of merit. That's the only way that this is going to continue to happen. Whether or not that can trump Hollywood and their seeming necessity to put an agenda in every movie, well, we'll have to wait and see. But the other little possible silver lining that I can see is the fact that, well, if you want a good comic book, you just have to abandon Marvel Comics at this point. Again, there is no way that I can see them actually producing anything of merit except possibly by chance every once in a while. But if you look at what is going on today with people producing stories, and especially stories that are fantasy fiction kind of stories, stories that would inspire a comic book, they are all over the place now. And it reminds me of the early 1900s, before comic books actually got produced, when you had all of this pulp fiction being put out there all over the place with fantasy and science fiction, and the characters of this pulp fiction eventually became the first characters that went into the comic books. And then those first characters went on to inspire characters like Superman and Batman. But with the digital medium that we have right now, with people being able to put out their stories as quickly as possible and to the entire world, it just reminds me of those old stories that were being put out as Pulp Fiction in the early 1900s that were the source material that helped create the first great comic characters. And it seems to me that this is the same thing that's going on right now. You have an explosion of this material which can be used in the future as great source material for great comics. And it's a great time to be alive if you love these kinds of stories, but it's an awful hard time to be alive if you're simply a comic book fan. So, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about this. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.